Good morning, everybody. A couple of interviews to announce. I think they're worthwhile. This one was an interview between Gad Saad and Maxime Bernier, and they also use a Yeti microphone. They're everywhere. It's crazy. So uh, it's a well, it's a it's a good interview. It's interesting. They discuss some. Uh, some fun topics and some serious topics, and it's well worth the watch. I did an interview yesterday with Bennett, and it was fun, and I had to skip out after an hour because I had to do bedtime, because, I mean, that's what you have to do when you have two young kids. So thank you for Bennett. Uh, thank you, Bennett, for having me on, and the whole, you can watch the whole interview. It's it's uh, interesting. It's fun. I had a good time, and uh, I, hope, I hope you had a good time watching it. And now into the news. I came across this picture on Twitter. Antifa. Antifa, Greta. What's going on, Greta? Why are you wearing anti-fascist t-shirts, Greta? It seems, I mean, well, the tweet that I found this on says the plot thickens and it and it tagged Amazing Polly. And well, I'm interested to see what Amazing Polly thinks about this because yeah, that's the, the Antifa movement is, uh, well, quite interesting. Here is the CBC reporting on August 9th, 2019. Growing number of newcomers, refugees, ending up homeless in Canada. And this is this is Trudeau's legacy. I've long been talking about, and this article talks about, how people crossing illegally, and they call it irregularly, has puts an impact pressure on our housing market. And people, when I'm discussing this at the doors, not that they're resistant, but they don't think that that's a problem. And, and it ties in with immigration too, because when you first come to Canada, you don't have the resources to purchase a house, particularly not a half a million dollar house, right? And that's what all of the houses are currently. If you want to buy like, you know, three bedroom house, you're going to spend half a million bucks, $450,000 plus taxes and property taxes and, you know, all of those extra little fees, right? We're, we're getting to the point where you have to be rich in order to afford a house which is, well, that's a departure from where we used to be in Canada. And, and the gap is widening, and yet still, we're hearing the solution is increased immigration, everyone, and it's racist if you, if you would question it. Well, it's not racist, it's an economic issue. And how would you feel if you got told that this country was full of opportunity and money abounds and the government's going to help you, and you arrived and you were just homeless, put to, set, put to sleep in a shelter, or even worse, on the street? A lot of people would want to go home, which is what's happening in France and happening in the United Kingdom too. People who have made a treacherous journey to the West through really harrowing conditions through the, the human trafficking chain that starts in Turkey. If you haven't seen Laura uh, Southern's documentary, have a watch. But once they get to those places, those destinations, they find that the opportunities that were promised to them aren't there. Same thing's happening here. And so... CBC reporting, growing number of newcomers, refugees, ending up homeless in Canada. Studies. A growing number of newcomers to Canada are ending up in shelters or are finding themselves homeless, newly released government figures show. Two new reports released this week by Employment and Social Development Canada offer a glimpse into the extent of the homelessness problem across the country and reveal the population's that are most vulnerable. The National Shelter Study, which looked at federal data on shelter users between 2005 and 2016, found an observable increase in refugees using shelters. In 2016, there were 2,000 refugees sleeping in shelters, not counting those facilities designated specifically for refugees, an increase from 1,000 just two years earlier, that's 2014, when the figures first began to be tracked. Tim Richter, president of the Canadian Alliance to End Homelessness, said he believes refugees are being forced to turn to homeless shelters because of a lack of housing capacity in areas where refugees are settling. Quote, many of them are coming to Toronto, in Ontario, and to Quebec. And in those communities, the rental market, yeah, the community of Quebec. And in those communities, the rental market is just really tight, and we don't have the capacity to house them, Richter said. Homelessness is a function of housing affordability, availability, and income. When you're new to Canada, you generally won't have the income to be able to buy a house, and there's just not enough affordable housing options. Canada has been experiencing an influx of asylum seekers crossing into Canada irregularly, illegally, avoiding official checkpoints between Canada-US borders in order to file for refugee protection without being turned away under Canada's safe third country agreement with the US. Over 46,000 Illegal border crossers have been intercepted by the RCMP since 2017. There were more before 2017. Many of them have been staying in Toronto and Montreal to await the outcome of the refugee claims, which, have put, which has put pressure on temporary housing capacity in those cities. Now, I want to talk about this. That puts pressure on everything. Everybody trying to get a house, trying to get a 
a cheap rental, trying to get a one bedroom or a two bedroom apartment is now competing with, with temporary housing. And that thereby takes up inventory. And that inventory then becomes more valuable and the, and the landlord can now increase the rent right? Can increase what he can ask for. It used to be that a two bedroom apartment in not necessarily Toronto, but in Guelph, you could get it for under a thousand dollars, right? Thousand dollars would get you two bedroom apartment, one bedroom apartment, $800. And now we're looking at a vastly different rental market in a very short period of time and increase food and other cost of living as well. And your salaries are not increasing at that rate. You're paying more taxes, not less. And the government's offering to buy a part of your house in order to fix that problem. But that doesn't fix the problem of the rest of all the costs going up. And bringing more people in through immigration and ignoring the open border that has been Roxham Road and our leaky, leaky uh, north or southern border with the United States doesn't help either. Because look, they're ending up homeless and in shelters. It doesn't work. Fundamentally, this is a failure. The Trudeau government is a failure. They have failed to protect our government. They have failed to pr protect our country. They have failed to protect the cities from the impact of these people crossing illegally into our country. And they've broken the systems that are supposed to be a check and balance. They're supposed to be a hearing. They look at you, do you qualify? And most of these people don't qualify. I've been parading around a couple of different CBC articles talking about how 90% of the people who cross illegally into Canada don't qualify for refugee status, mainly because they live in a safe country the United States, and they're crossing from the United States because they were worried that John, Donald Trump was going to deport them, but they had a house or whatever in the, in the United States. It's, they don't qualify, period. They're not refugees. So it is very, very interesting to see all of this play out and having that economic conversation, having that, these realistic aspects to this conversation, the fact that they're illegal, the fact that that they don't qualify for status here. And the fact that they cost us a lot of money and the fact that they are ending up or are pushing other people out of housing is problematic. Why aren't we taking care of our citizens in Canada? Why are we allowing the housing market to double and triple in value and cost? Why are we allowing our young people to be priced out of getting a place, a safe place to live, to rent? Why are we allowing our housing market to be bought up by foreign investment and driving the price up? Why are we allowing this to continue? It makes no sense. Back to the article. If No, not quite back to the article. If we destroy the systems that built our country, then our country doesn't shrug that off and say, oh, we'll try again. We degenerate. That's what happens. It doesn't, it doesn't just stay the way it is because... Justin Trudeau's got nice hair and socks. Because when you destroy the economic engine of the country, Alberta and the oil sands, which is giving, because we don't have refineries and we can't get our oil to Tidewater, we are giving millions of dollars a day to the United States because our oil sells at a reduced price. If the price of oil on the world market is $50 a barrel, we're selling it at $12 a barrel. And that's a big discrepancy. So they buy our oil and they refine our oil and they're making a lot of money on that oil because they're getting the oil for $12, not $50. Where we could sell it at $50, we're leaving that money on the table. You see, is when you don't have that revenue coming in, Alberta is giving money in equalization payments all across Canada, and it doesn't have money to give because there's no revenue coming in, right? With no revenue coming in, Canada as a whole is poorer and can't fund those social programs that used to be funded by that revenue. And so, we get worse, not better. I hope that's clear. We need to be able to maintain our systems in order to help the people who live in Canada. And then when everybody in Canada is taken care of, First Nations, veterans, everybody in Canada is taken care of, then we can start helping the rest of the world. But until we've solved all of our problems, why are we telling the world we can solve theirs? I don't understand. Back to the article. The City of Toronto estimated in late 2018 that about 40% of people using its shelters identified as refugees or asylum claimants. Other Ontario cities have been asked to help relocate refugees in order to ease the burden on Toronto's shelter system. Meanwhile, a second study released this week by Ottawa that offers a quote point-in-time snapshot of homelessness in 61 communities also noted a trend of homelessness among newcomers. It found 14% of people who identified as homeless in 2018 were newcomers to Canada. Of that total, 8% indicated they were immigrants, 
3% identified as refugees, and 4% as refugee claimants. The point in time study captures not only the, those using shelters, but also people sleeping on the streets in transnational houses or staying with others. The 2018 study expanded its count from 32 communities in 2016 to 61 in 2018. Both studies also found Canada's indigenous people remain vastly overrepresented among the country's homeless population. Among one th- Almost one-third of shelter users and those counted in the point-in-time report identified as indigenous, despite making up only one, only about 5% of the national population. So as I said, it seems insane that we're putting all of this pressure on our housing market, particularly on the cheap housing market, right? Like the newcomer's housing, one-bedroom and two-bedroom two apartments, um, smaller houses, all of this pressure because there's no inventory. There's no inventory because there's so many people trying to access it. And there's so many people trying to access it because our borders aren't controlled and because the liberals are increasing immigration without effectively working on the infrastructure, infrastructure to support those people. It's irresponsible. It's bad governance. It is an absolute catastrophic failure of the Trudeau government. My name is Mark Peralivis. I'm the local candidate for Guelph for the People's Party of Canada for the October election. I hope you vote for me. Thanks for watching today. Check out the People's Party of Canada.ca and have a wonderful, wonderful day.